Hey, everybody, and welcome to Learning from Smart People. I am your host, Rob Oliver, and I am thrilled to death to be able to bring you another smart person today. I, and when I say another smart person, I don't mean another smart person besides me. I mean another smart person in the long line of smart people that we have all been learning from. And uh, my guest today is Helen Chang. She is a best-selling ghostwriter, author, speaker, and entrepreneur. She believes in the power of stories to transform people, whether through books, audio, or viral media. She finds grace in helping people tell their stories so that they can inspire others, make a difference, and ultimately fulfill their own life purpose. Helen, welcome to the show. Hi, Rob. It's so great to see you, and thank you to all who are listening right now. Absolutely. It is wonderful to have you here. And listen, I've got I've written three books, and I, I have um, another one that was translated into Spanish. So I'm proud to say I'm the author of four books. And I, when I was, when I was reading about what you do and, and looking into, I was like, yes, I want someone to be able to come on and to articulate why, uh, you know, basically what we talked about in the, in the pre-interview, all right, this show is about helping entrepreneurs build their toolbox. And I would love to be able to talk about why having a book is such an important tool in that toolbox. So let's talk about this. What Besides people saying, like, I just, I have a story I want to share. There's all kinds of books that you can write. Can you talk about the different types of books that people can write as a, as either an entrepreneur or just in general? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, for entrepreneurs in general, what I find a lot is that they want to increase their credibility. They want to be seen as an expert in their field. They want to uh, be seen as a thought leader. At the same time, they often have very heart-wrenching, heartfelt, um, and inspiring personal stories that they want to share how they went from rags to riches, how they suffered great defeat and finally found their way back and, and the method and, and uh, through wisdom and hard work, they were able to succeed. And so it's this combination of both having a strategic method and having the heartfelt stories together um, that authors or entrepreneurs want to share with the world. And a book is a wonderful way to do that. Because one, it establishes them as thought leaders in their area. At the same time, it establishes their emotional connection. It creates an emotional connection with the people they most want to serve, their tribe. And um, so a book is a wonderful way to have both, is to have the knowledge, the wisdom, and the personal emotional connection. Okay, so I'm wondering about this. Is are those two separate books or can they be the same book? In other words, a, a book establishing your expertise in your field and, and a book that shares your story, um, are, are those separate or, are they, or can they be the same? Absolutely. I highly recommend that they be the same because if you're just talking about uh, your expertise then you can come off as cold and the book can read like a workbook, a how-to manual. And if you're just writing about your own story, your, your personal, um, you know, uh, 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 trials and tribulations, then it's a nice story, but nobody can duplicate it, you know? And so it's really hard. So you absolutely want to have it together. And the other thing is that that a book gives you that ability to create a, an ecosystem of products because from that book you're able to create talks events online courses um, and you're able to go on media and have social media and TED talks and so on that create an overall ecosystem and culture for your business to be able to attract clients people who want to work with you and to purchase your services and products and so on so for for entrepreneurs Books are great for raising your credibility, for attracting revenue, and most importantly, to inspire people and make a difference in the world. Yeah, well, 
Okay, so the the first part of the word authority is author. So to establish yourself as an authority on something, uh, when you become an author and you've written about that, you've demonstrated that you've got the expertise. So I, yeah, and actually um, back on American Thanksgiving, we had uh, Donna Kozik on who she writes, uh, or she's a, a book coach and she talks about um, your big business card and how a book is like a business card, except nobody throws away books, right? Because how many, how many business cards do you have collected in your wallet and you end up throwing them all away because uh, you, there's, there's nowhere for them. But uh, so as you are sharing your story and as you're sharing your expertise, you are putting yourself in a position, as you said, can you expand on that concept of the ecosystem? Because I, that is a really, the way that a book opens up a whole realm of possibility for you. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So you know what? Do you mind if I just share with you how I got into ghostwriting and how I worked with my first client and my entrepreneur, just my personal story? I'd love to hear about it. how I got into this. Love to yeah, hear. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I was a journalist. I'm I'm an award-winning journalist, and I covered business topics, spirituality, motivation. And um, eventually, entrepreneurs started asking me to ghostwrite books. So one day, this one entrepreneur asked me, hey, would you ghostwrite my book? And I said, sure. I'd always dreamt about writing books. I wanted to write books. And um, I figured, hey, I can I can easily transition into writing books. No big deal, right? So I start interviewing him. I start getting his hero's journey. I start getting the story of how he had been bankrupt and how he eventually um, uh, came out of that bankruptcy foreclosure, became an investor, multimillionaire, multi-multimillionaire, and then having his own television show and so on and succeeding. So I wrote this book. I'm so excited. His marketing manager is on, they've got uh, the TV commercials, the infomercials, the, the coaching sessions, the mastery events, you know, the whole ecosystem of products that they're going to launch uh, along with the book. All they needed was the book. So I wrote this book and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, I'm going to be, this is going to be like the next Think and Grow Rich or the next Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm super excited about it. And I hand in the manuscript. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, they're going to be so happy about this book. And the author and the marketing manager comes on. And the marketing manager says, this is not marketable. We have to start over. And I think, oh, okay. I get off the phone and I do what probably any good entrepreneur might do. I crawl into bed and I stay there for probably about three days depressed. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not good enough. Mm. Maybe I'm not meant to do this. Maybe I should quit. But then I think, no, I promised them that I would get this book done. I, I'm going to finish it no matter what, even if this is the last thing I do for them. And, you know, I may be a good award-winning journalist, but that doesn't mean I'm a great book writer. So, but I'm going to get it done. So I get up, I go to the bookstores, I start studying best-selling business books. I start really looking at what makes a book successful and what makes it um, engaging for people. And so I go back and I rewrite the book. I rewrite the manuscript and I hand it in and I'm in my living room again with the phone thinking to myself, well, I hope this is good enough. I hope they'll accept it. And the author, the entrepreneur, and the marketing manager gets on and says, this is good. We can publish. And the book went on to have five editions. And uh, it's been read by hundreds of thousands of readers. And one, one event that the author was kind enough to invite me to he actually introduced me as his writer and people came up to me at the break and they had tears in their eyes and they said that book changed our lives wow. for generations to come thank you so much and that's when i realized the power of a book because it's not just creating 
an anchor for your business, for all these different opportunities, but it's reaching people with your knowledge, with your experience and your stories that give them inspiration. And I spoke to that author recently, and he said that that book had become the anchor of a business division that is now worth more than a hundred million dollars. Now he's on his way to billionaire status right. already, right? With his main, with his core business, but that book and that whole division that the, the book spun off is a nice income stream for his business. So for you as an entrepreneur, if you're thinking about a book, you're going to think about it as a, uh, as another division that's going to spin off all these other possibilities, these other communication platforms to put you out there that's going to supplement and support your main core business. Yeah. So. No, thank you for sharing that story. And, and all right. So I've got to ask this question because um, with me, when I'm writing my books, I feel like I'm putting myself into the book, right? I, I'm, I feel like I'm sharing what, you know, of myself and how, as a ghostwriter, how are you able to, you know, do that where you, you're writing something and it is, it, someone else gets all the credit for what you've done. And now he's got a, you know, multi-million dollar segment of his business that is founded on what you did. Like how, how are you able to do that? Because that's got to be tough. You know, I kind of see myself as having a purpose and a mission in life. And that is to be a divine messenger. I'm given the gift of being able to bring forth stories that make a difference on the planet and in people's lives. And by being a ghostwriter, I'm able to bring forth stories, ideas, strategies and, that I would never know myself because I'm not a specialist in all these different areas. And, and we're able to reach hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people, actually millions of people, given the authors that I've worked with, through these books and ideas. And I'm excited to be part of that, to be part of that channel, to bring that forth. And you have to understand that I've been a successful journalist. My byline has been in print. I've won awards and so on, right? And I have my own books. So I see it as a service in helping others to get their work out there to have an impact on, on communities of people that I could never touch, I could never reach. Okay, let me let me kind of rephrase this then. As a ghostwriter, you, you're looking at it almost as like a story facilitator in which you're working with other people. And it's not that, it's not that they just say like, go write a book and, and tell my story. It, it's um, as you work with them, as you interview them, as you talk to them, you're helping them to develop their story, you're helping to understand their story and then helping to be able to, to tell that story and to tell, to share that expertise with the millions of people that are out there and, and that need it. it. Does that, how does that sound to you as an explanation? Yeah, absolutely. So I do have a process that I've developed called the create my book system. And in the writing stage, the first thing to do is to plan the book. And in planning the book, I work with the author to discover their heart message, which is the key message they want to share with the world. And then we figure out what are the topics of the book. So that creates a plan, a blueprint for moving forward. The next step is telling my story where they are, where I interview them. It's basically downloading from the brain, you know, all these ideas and thoughts and experiences from the brain and we get it down on paper. The next step is writing the book where we actually write the drafts. And that's a very collaborative process going back and forth. Um, 
uh, typically about three times. And so I'm writing the first cut of what they've said. We're looking at uh, logic, uh, uh, illogical uh, areas. We're looking at holes. We're looking at maybe this story is better done this way. Maybe this articulation would be better said a different way. And then, you know, the author is giving input and then we do the second draft and then and then we integrate the the title and the subtitle. And then we go into the editing for copy, copy editing for sentence flow, uh, spelling, grammar, that sort of stuff and proofreading. And then we go into the design. So it's a very collaborative process throughout. And my job is to make sure I capture the author's message and voice in an authentic way. And their job is to... Uh, you know, fine tune and crystallize what it is they're thinking and, and to look at what's their overall message and tone uh, that they want. And in the process, we're often coming up with their intellectual property, their proprietary system, right? So I work with authors and, I, and sometimes we'll go, okay, well, you do this, you do this, you do this. You say, well, why don't we call that a system? let's give it a system that you can then trademark right. or let's brand this, you know, and then they go and trademark it, register it, whatever. And that becomes their intellectual property. So we're not just interviewing, we're actually creating their proprietary system. Uh, that is okay. So I love what you're talking about there because it's understanding that a book is not only helpful for others by providing them with your story and your information, but a book is also helpful for you in kind of, as you said, crystallizing your thoughts, understanding what you do, and then putting that into, into something that is now marketable. And so you're not just, you're not just selling a book for 20 bucks. The book for 20 bucks is kind of the, the introduction to a system that is trademarked and is now, you know, is also a saleable item or, you know, basically another stream of revenue that um, I love it. So talk to me then you, as you're interviewing people and you work with them, they write their book. Okay. Um, or you write their book, however, their book gets written. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then what, what kind of is the, the next step? And like, how do you, once you get the book, where do you go from there? How do you find those media opportunities? How do you um, put that into a TED talk? Or like, how do you move forward once you've kind of have the book written? Yeah. So in our Create My Book system, we also help authors to complete the design process and the publishing um, those are still very important components. So in the design process, one of the things we do is a title and subtitle brainstorm with them. So we'll come up with more than 100 possible titles, more than 20 possible subtitles. And, you know, working together, we narrow it down to five and three. Then we have them test it with their market, with their ideal client so that they get the feedback that they need as to what people are actually going to buy. And that gives them a very clear uh, and distinct title, book title, that people really can resonate with. And that becomes part of their brand as well. Let me, let me think of one. So for example, uh, with this author, her brand is outrageous authenticity, and she's a salesperson. So this gives her that branding name, and, and that's what happened after her book came out. She was able to book all these speaking uh, gigs in industries other than her original industry, which is real estate, and to go worldwide with it. So that brand is very important, the name. You know, some of our some of our authors work with Michael Gerber. We've got the Emith HVAC contractor. So having that name, having that branding that we've done work with uh, and tested as the book then allows you to go and create the TED Talk based on that branded name, that branded title. The online course based on that branded name, that that title. The... Um, uh, of course, the social media, the blogs, the LinkedIn, the YouTube channel, the podcast, 
using that name and title. So um, once you have that name and title and people know you for that, you're able to take that and create all those all those different forms of uh, media on different media platforms. And um, and the, 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 the interesting thing about it is that all of your intellectual property is in that book, at least your first book. You want to have a series of books um, strategically, right, on Amazon. But that first book, your intellectual property, your stories, your heart, your emotion is in the book, and that gets sold for the lowest amount, maybe $20, $25. And you're only taking a portion of that content, turning it into an online course that then gets sold for maybe $500, maybe $2,000, you know, but your online course has a lot more uh, uh, how to with it, right? And then your TED talk or your, your keynote talk, you, you know, keynote talks, people charge 10,000 and up, 10,000 to $75,000 for a keynote talk, and you're again, you're only taking a portion of your content from your book and expounding on that in the keynote talk and so on. So your book really is kind of like your um, content Bible, kind of your anchor. And then you're only using a portion of that to create the others that are more, uh, you know, more detailed. So the way I like to say it is that the book is the what and the why. Your online course is the how. Your workshops, your events, your interactions, your consulting, your coaching with people is a lot of how. Okay. And your keynote talks again is the why. So, so there's that's how you create uh, a, a waterfall, shall we say, of income, um, products, and services from this one uh, anchor item which is your book. Okay. And so let me just kind of read something between the lines that I, I think I understand now that I didn't before you are helping people. They, someone basically says, I want to write a book and you are helping them to do that, but they don't have to have like a fully processed out complete thought plan of what their book is about. Uh, nope. So you're helping to develop that book that book concept and that uh, that is what is able to kind of make the difference in helping them to clarify where they are, helping them to clarify what their expertise, what their um, understanding is and to build on that. And you don't have to have it all together. That's kind of the job that you're doing. Is that Exactly. Exactly. It's a very, it's a creative and fun process. You know, oh, can I share with you about one book? Yes. That we worked on. So, um, so Bart Baker is an insurance agent um, out of a uh, an area in California, and he wanted to write a book that would appeal to uh, his audience in that area that would make him stand out. I mean, you know, insurance agents, they're all over the place. Right. And so, so he wanted that. So we went about, um, coming up with his book ideas and I got a lot of his really personal stories, like how he started as a firefighter and protecting people from fires. And then he transitioned into insurance again, as a way to protect people. And then the first person he went to go visit um, as an insurance agent, happened to be the wife of a man whose life he had helped uh, save while he was a firefighter. Wow. So it was very miraculous, right? And we have a lot of stories about things that he that he's seen um, as an insurance agent. So the stories are actually pretty funny. You know, you could think like, oh God, it's going to be insurance about house and insurance about car, insurance sounds like a boring subject, but we had all these incredible stories. And then while we were in it, we came up with all these methods. So for example, the gap elimination checklist, you know, and so these are now his, his uh, proprietary methods that he uses in his, in his uh, policies and so on. So again, 
he stands out as an insurance agent with these methods that he uses. And then when we were when we were sitting around brainstorming a title for his book, he and his wife, you know, the 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 titles that were coming up were stuff like how to talk to your insurance agent, how to save money on your insurance agent uh, with your insurance, you know, make good decisions with your policies. You know, it was like so boring. Right. <laughs> it was like a big commercial. It was awful. It didn't reflect the, the heart that we had in the book. Sure. And so finally I just said, Bart, do you have something quirky, like a offbeat kind of story you can share? And his marketing manager said, his marketing manager, who happens to be his wife, Wendy, said, well, you know, we had this friend, this couple, and they went on safari to Africa. And the husband really loved to take photos. And so one day he was, uh, you know, with he was seeing this herd of elephants and he went up to this to take a photo of an elephant. And then he decided to do a close up. And the elephant sat on him and killed him. Oh, no. And Bart's thinking, if he had life insurance, that would be one less thing his wife would have to worry about. Right. Because they're in this, they're in this, you know, foreign country. It's, it's a big mess, right? So anyway, so I said, well, what about this as a potential title? If an elephant sits on you, are you covered? Right. It's genius. Right? How to talk with your insurance agent to be properly insured. That's a subtitle. And so all of a sudden, the elephant became a symbol of unexpected disaster. And that became his logo. That, that became the whole uh, symbol of the book. Uh, there were cartoons on it, his whole marketing campaign. People loved it so much that his clients, he, and he gave out this book to everybody, right? He gave it out as a gift. Sure. And his clients renewed faster and they referred other people and the new prospects uh, came in faster. And people in the industry had their had his book on their shelf and they referred people to him. His business grew in the first year by 25%. Okay. And he directly attributes it to the book. Right. So it it's about return on investment, right? That Exactly. It's huge return on investment, but it's a creative process, right? We're working together. We don't know in advance. It's the series of ex it's it's the experience of exploring it and mining the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom that the author already has and then packaging it in a way that's really authentic and speaks and connects with people and yet also uh, also presents the author as a credible authority in that field. Okay, wonderful. So we've talked about a book as a way to establish credibility, uh, as a book as a way to um, establish some revenue. Um, what about creating a tribe or, or, you know, developing fans. Do you, how do you, is, how do you do that with your book? Cause, um, not every book is a fan favorite. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of our authors like to give away their book or they give them out at events that they're having, or they sell them at events and so on and so forth. And what happens is that people become, um, engaged in the stories, it becomes this collective memory and there are phrases from the book and there are wisdoms and perspectives and insights that people start picking up on. And that sort of becomes the culture of the tribe. And eventually that allows you to have events and Facebook groups and, and uh, Twitter followings and so on that, that are part of your tribe, your army. So for example, um, Kimberly Pope Robinson She's a very successful veterinarian. She was very, very successful in what she what she did. And um, she um, uh, one day uh, she had become so burnt out that she just didn't want to do it anymore. And 
she went to her bedroom and she opened up her hand and took a bottle of pills mm. and she put extra pills to be just to be extra sure. Right. And she was ready to take it. She was so depressed. She was ready to take them and take her life. Wow. But then a voice came to her and said, no, you have more to do. Mm. And so that began her journey back to recovery, to connection. And the very sad thing is that the veterinary industry has one of the highest suicide rates. Wow. Very, very tragic. One of the highest suicide rates of all, of all professions. So she herself began that journey to connection and, and hope and, um, and courage. And that became her book, The Unspoken Life. Recognize your passion, embrace your imperfection, and stay connected. And after her book came out, she started getting texts and emails from people every day saying, you saved my life. Somebody understands me. Wow. And uh, veterinarian offices started buying her book by the dozens to give to their staff. Right. Right. So that they could find a way back from their own depression because they have so much compassion fatigue, you know. And so this has started a movement for her called the uh, One Life Connection Community. She's been invited to speak all around the world at veterinary events and so on. So she now has this community, this tribe of people who were burnt out and realize that they have to really change their focus in order to serve more, more people, more animals and their lives. So again, a community comes out of that place of your own authentic expression, your own authentic experience and the wisdom that you gained and people wanting and sharing that experience, resonating with it and wanting to be part of that and part of your movement to grow. When you have that, the, the tools come into place, you know, whatever Facebook groups, Twitter, Instagram groups, or, or, you know, all these groups come in, but it's having that message and that resonance that the book provides that starts to give you that momentum to build a community. Yeah. I, fantastic. So listen, Alan, you've given us a lot to think about today. If people are looking to find out more about you or about your company, uh, where can they find you? Yeah. So I, I've got something called free gifts from Helen, free gifts from Helen.com where people can come and create their book vision and just start thinking about, you know, who does they want to reach? What is their book for? And just start visioning their book. And again, that's free gifts with an S from Helen.com. So you can go there, get your free gift and connect from there. Yeah. Absolutely. I will put a link to that down in the show notes so that people can get their free gifts from Helen. You're entirely too kind. Uh, Ellen, we've, we've gone through all of this. We've established that you are indeed smart, but it is time for three questions to establish your humanity. Are you ready for this? <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. Um, what is your go-to radio station or radio station genre when you are traveling in the car? Um, I recently tapped into something called access consciousness. And um, it's sort of a, uh, there's a method of uh, healing and expanding consciousness. And so I enjoy listening to that and that podcast because it brings me back to remembering uh, who I am and what's really important in life. Now, wonderful. Uh, is there something that you would change about yourself if you could? Releasing self-judgment. Oh. Yes. I am my worst critic. Okay. All right. Last question. Hot dog. Is, is the hot dog the essential um, summer food or is it just an absolutely gross piece of um, serially processed meat? 
Personally, I like spam better. <laughs> okay, so there's got to be some Hawaiian roots in there, right? Because it isn't spam. That's right. I, I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. So, <laughs> so we put we put hot dogs in our chili. We put hot dogs at, at, cooked in teriyaki sauce, and we love spam. So <laughs> wonderful! It's essential all weather food: I, hot dogs and spam. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Listen, thank you so much for being on today. This has been fantastic. I hope folks check you out, take advantage of your um, free gifts. And to all my listeners, thank you for being here. And I will remind you, as always, that when you stop learning, you stop living. Have a great day, everybody. 